morning everybody, now Thursday morning after my trip to Decorex yesterday uh, which was good fun but quite tiring, it's a lot of work walking around and looking at things and speaking to people. Um, today we are off to a place called St John's Wood and also Primrose Hill so I'm going to meet a client, a very good uh, friend, good client of mine and we're going to look at a rental property that she's um, moving into and I'm going to be moving them house so all their furniture will be coming with them most of it um, into the place and I've got to fit it all in so it's going to be very much a layout job after that I'm going off to another client of mine's Mr Hunt he's quite infamous um, he was one of my oldest clients both in age and both in length of time and uh, we've been doing some plumbing work there so I want to check up on that and see how that's been going um, so it's quite bright and early here in London a little bit cloudy, it's actually quite warm still. That's what it's like in September here. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to stop off as usual and get my hot chocolate. And then I've probably got about an hour or so's journey ahead of me on the tube. I have all my documents that I need with me. Um, the list of furniture, which is gonna be moving around for the first client and my measuring tape, obviously. And I also have my trusty Filofax. Yes, I still use a Filofax. I don't know quite why I still use a file effects. Probably something to do with it's quicker, you can draw um, and you can read. Um, I think that's it. Anyway, let's get started on the day. Here we are at the rental house. So I've had a good look around with the clients, they have just left. So my next job is to actually go around and measure all the nooks and crannies in this house to see exactly where their furniture is gonna fit in when I move them in here. Now we've already had a discussion about where all the furniture is going to go, which rooms they're going to be in, which rooms the children are going to be in. We've had a look at some of the issues, uh, notably the stairs, so I'll show you those in a moment because they're quite steep, they're all painted white, um, someone has already fallen down them, so uh, there are some sort of issues. There's also storage issues, and we have to look at exactly what their existing furniture holds, where it can fit in, what needs to be replaced, what can go into storage, and what can be chucked away. Moving people home is an art. It's something that I actually really like. I know lots of people hate moving home. I totally get it, I totally understand it, but I actually love it because you can sit down with someone's furniture and say this is where this can go this is how this can look and you and it's not really too much a, of a difficulty to actually imagine all of their things in this particular space especially if it's like this as you can kind of see here it's all white it's uh, we have wooden floors which i'll show you we have neutral carpets um, and everything is very clean and bright and you can exactly see all of the different furniture which is going to go in. Style-wise, it doesn't necessarily fit all together. Some of their furniture, some clients' furniture will be dark um, and almost foreboding and traditional, whereas this is where it's a traditional house, it's actually quite modern. Things that we won't have to do are things like curtains. So up here they actually have some blinds. They actually have roller blinds, they're privacy roller blinds. They don't actually have any curtains as such. And I don't think the client is actually going to be wanting to put curtains up. They're going to be here for a year, um, so they're not staying forever. So there's no reason for them to put up curtains unless they really wanted to pay for that expense. The only places that they do need curtains would be down here in the living room. Um, but the bedrooms have curtains, thankfully they're all blackout, so I don't need to have to worry about those because curtains can be an expensive object to get. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is measuring the entire building, all the little nooks and crannies, and I do this by hand, and I do it for a very good reason. The estate agents come up with a plan of their own, and this is done to maximise, in some ways, the sales potential of the actual house, or the property, or the flat, or wherever you're actually looking at. And that's fine, but their measurements are not going to measure up to what you're going to be putting in. And the first thing to do is to go around and measure exactly what you have according to you. Then you know it's correct because the estate agents are going to come up with something like this. And this is actually a 
uh, I think what you get from most estate agents, certainly in the UK, and I'm quite imagine the floor plans that you get somewhere around the world, and they no longer measure up to anything that you and I would find even remotely useful when you're putting in furniture and designing a layout. So these sort of um, things, they have all sorts of strange things on them, um, measurements there, they have the kitchen and everything else, but they don't, they have obviously spiral staircases here as you can kind of see, and they, uh, th this is one of the main problems which I'll show you about in a moment, but they don't have all the details that you actually need. So you need to go around, take photographs of everything, take measurements of everything, and then you have a working floor plan of your own that you can keep and you'll know exactly what fits in where and it'll be done to your own specifications. One other word when you are measuring, always measure skirting to skirting. This is one of the most important things to do. People tend to measure between wall and wall, and that's fine, but the skirting is actually much further in. And that's when you're putting in furniture, you'll need to know that you need to measure between these two points. And make sure that you give yourself a measurement which is correct. So if something is, if the measurement between the skirtings is about, say, 100 centimetres wide, make sure it is 100 centimetres wide. Don't say, oh, it's a roughly about 105. Those five centimetres can be extremely important. And for measuring, I have my trusty tape. This comes with me everywhere. This is a five meter one. I normally have an eight meter Stanley tape. Why? Because some of these floors are huge. And you just think, I, five meters isn't going to be long enough if I'm measuring an entire room. Sometimes you need an eight meter one, but my eight meter tape broke, so I'm making do with my five meter one for the moment. I think it will do for the time being, um, but I will let you know if it doesn't. But um, an eight meter one has already been ordered and that's winging its way to me at home. So we have our work cut out for us, let's get on with the measuring. One last thing to remember when you are measuring and you are planning a room is look at the power points, the power sockets, the aerial sockets and any other five amp plug sockets that there are dotted around the room. These all need to be marked on your plan because if you are putting in a floor lamp, a TV or anything else for that matter, you need to know that there is power associated with that particular item and that you can put it where you want to put it. Always take note of where your plug sockets are. measuring the entire house. Um, all the measurements are down on my paperwork so I know all the little nooks and crannies and I know where everything is. So I think it's now time to show you what we've got to work with. Entering the hallway here, uh, there are wall lights. This door goes through to the living room where I've just been filming. So we're gonna be closing that off and uh, leaving, that, uh, leaving that closed as it is. Um, and going straight through into here. Um, this is the living room, so we will be putting, in theory, a large grey sofa, which will be running corner-wise over here. The TV will be sitting maybe on a sideboard over there, or it may be going over there. Either way, it needs to feed into these plug sockets and aerials and things here. What you can kind of see down here and what we have, we have the two aerial sockets, we have a telephone socket, you can see the little, uh, little telephone symbol there, and a C6. These are Cat6 cables and they deal with all the data and the Wi-Fi and everything else and all the different sky boxes and everything else that comes in. Two sockets here, these are 13 amp, a 13 amp double socket, and that is a 5 amp socket. These are lamp sockets, I don't know whether you have those in other parts of the world, but we have them here in the UK. Not everybody uses them, 
but they are everywhere in this house. Um, it's very well appointed as far as um, sockets are concerned. That's an air vent that will be staying. I've got rid of it in the film house you might have seen, but that will be staying here. Otherwise we have the normal radiators that you see, and always remember you've got to measure, when you're measuring up to a radiator, you're measuring up to these poles here. Not to the actual thing, you're measuring up to these pipes that go into the floor. Moving on. I'm going to go upstairs first of all, before we head downstairs. Edge to edge carpet, always good for rental properties. Into the master bedroom, where we have rather a lot of wardrobe space, which is great. So they have everything all in here. These are all on touch latches. So as you can see, they're handleless, all touch latches, and they open the doors there. Also here are some curtains. Now these curtains, um, I can tell, have been cleaned. How do I know? You can see that they are uneven at the hem. And what this means is, is that the lining that we have on the lining here, they're not interlined, but the lining they have used has not been pre-shrunk. Therefore, the lining down at the bottom basically has got shorter and all of the fabric has got shorter. And that's what happens to curtains that have been cleaned. They shrink and you can always tell. I have looked at the top here to see what they've been doing at the poles. Everything is working and you probably could let these curtains down a little bit but they're not worrying about that. There's obviously a little bit of bunting going up at the top there. As you can see here they've obviously always um, they've already got these roller blinds in. These are privacy roller blinds and they are put into most rental properties. This is where the bed will go. So as you can see here another air vent, sockets on both sides, that is an alarm thing there, so they actually will, that'll be a, that will have a key so they can turn off the alarm. It's like an intruder alarm. Switches either side to switch on these reading lights and also the main lights above. And into the master bathroom, which is reasonably well appointed. You can see here, straightforward shower tray. I think too much up there. Plenty of lighting. Starry, starry night. Double basin. Bath and plenty of storage, which is all good. This is on a touch latch here. Well appointed on proper metal runners, lovely to see. And the infamous heated towel rail with all the valves down below. And into the master bathroom, which is reasonably well appointed. You can see here, straightforward shower tray. I think too much up there. Plenty of lighting, starry, starry night, double basin, bath, and plenty of storage, which is all good. This is on a touch latch here. Well appointed. On proper metal runners, lovely to see and the infamous heated towel rail with all the valves down below. Moving up to the bedrooms above. These are the infamous stairs which we're having a little bit of an issue with. It's quite strange actually. There are obviously gaps around and there is no handrail. They're quite steep, more of those in a moment. 
into one of the bedrooms, as you can see here, this is going to be a children's bedroom. Alcoves, all of these things need to be measured. More sockets, dams and coloured curtains, and they're obviously quite short. I might have gone full length in here if I was going to design this myself, um, but they're obviously short, but not quite short enough to sit on the radiator, so I'm not quite sure why they've done those. But they have more sockets. Everything else present and correct. Bathroom, quite straightforward. Sink, blue, heated towel rail, and shower above the bath. Into the last room. This one actually has some storage in there. This one actually has some storage in there. Curtains as is before. A darker carpet in here actually. More sockets and things for TVs. Just so you can see where everything is. And finally, up these stairs, you can see the gaps through. Quite sure whether I would have done it this way. Into the top room of the house, we have some storage in the eaves, more storage in these cupboards here, little radiator. Plenty of space. This is obviously if you were putting a bed in here. You can see with the space, this is where you can tell where people are planning to put beds. You have the sockets on either side. This room is very, very sunny. It's very, very light and bright. Um, I think it's probably one of the nicest rooms, but I would envisage they would have put the children up here, but they're not going to um, only because of those steep steps. Always fascinating to look outside at what people have done at the backs of their houses. You can see here sort of various other different extensions that people have. Obviously you've got glass there. This is obviously sloping. People have roof lights going in here. Some people have probably put plant pots out and about. And as you sort of go further, you can see what other things have been done. The windows are always really interesting to look at. You can see these are really quite thin ones here and actually up here you can see the brick where you can see where one has been bricked in and also here they've made it smaller really interesting to see architecturally what's been happening here the stuff that you don't see at the front Down the stairs we have some more storage there is another cloakroom in there some more storage for coats in here and then we go downstairs to the basement to go to the kitchen down these stairs and here we are at the kitchen as you can see there quite well appointed reasonably fridge and gas cooker all in situ. They don't have a microwave, which is a bit strange. Uh, that's the back door leading out to the front sink and everything else. One of the other things to look for, which you don't see very often, these are floor sockets. And we don't see them very often for the really obvious reason that people don't seem to think about them. They're very useful, and that's where you would put um, perhaps maybe a laptop power cable or anything else that you're putting if you're putting a, a table in this space. Moving round, these are metro tiles. This is because you see them on the metros, you see them on the tube ways, more sockets as you can see, but these tiles fit in rather nicely. Very simply done and very popular indeed. Moving out to the back here, 
This is a TV bracket if you're wondering what this is. A TV bracket here sitting on the wall. It has, the joinery has a cutout for the wires to go down and all the other sockets and everything are all down there. Plenty of built-in joinery around. That's the garden. Um, another floor box here in case you wanted it. And then we have the stairs that are going up. This is actually going to be part of a little bit of a playroom. So all of this will probably be lined up with toys, various other different things. We'll put a, um, a rug down here um, and the children can really enjoy this space as well as the little terrace garden that we have out the back. All in all, a very nice space for a family. We will have to buy a few items of furniture for this property, notably a table and chairs um, that will have to fit in in this kitchen diner area, probably because the actual dining table that they have at the moment is really quite large. So that will be sold and they will be getting a new one to fit in with this property ahead of when they move back into the renovated property in about a year's time. I have dropped the keys off back with the estate agent. The house is locked up, he's going to sort out the alarm and I'm off to the next project. But first I think we need to stop for a spot of lunch. You can see the shard in the background there, post office tower. It's quite built up as you can see, unfortunately. The developers have come in. Oh,